700 pine trees were harvested for the lumber in the three decks. After the decks are laid, begins the caulking, where clubs and iron are used to drive oakum, or lightly tarred fibers, into the deck seams. Even the hull is caulked before it is coated with boiling tar. Caulking and tarring are done to ensure that the ship is watertight. In the mast workshop, the four-ton rudder of oak logs is joined together. The enormous mounting for the rudder is joined to the stern post and the rudder. Between the 11th and 12th frame, the passways for the propeller shafts are drilled. Inside the ship, the two 16-liter engines will be placed. In what used to be the cargo hold, there should be room for 36,000 liters of diesel oil and 20,000 liters of fresh water. In total, there will be eight tanks made out of stainless steel on board. A modern CAD system was used in the complex construction work. With this system, it is possible to create a picture of the ship's hull. 
and these drawings are also used to produce the ship's drawings. If you could remove the planking from the hull, you would see that the hull is filled with modern equipment. This machinery is mainly there to give the crew a secure environment to work and is also needed to fulfill the safety regulations of a modern ship classified for ocean traffic. For example, there are five waterproof bulkheads inside the hull, as well as modern sprinkler and sewage systems. This example illustrates the differences between the new and the historical ship. This fact also gives you an idea of the challenge that the engineers of the project have faced. They have to fit more than 40 modern systems into a hull shaped for sailing in the 18th century. There are, for example, systems for propulsion, fire, sanitation, and power supply. Furthermore, these systems are not to be visible from the outside and are not allowed to interfere with the ship's sailing ability. The two lower decks will therefore be of modern construction and the two upper decks will be copies of the 18th century vessel. Now it is June in the year 2003. After 10 years of hard work, it is finally time to launch the ship. The ship is painted and ready to glide out of the shipbuilding hall and down into the waters of the Yota River. The wall of the shipbuilding hall has been dismantled and everyone is working frantically to prepare for the launch. Here, one of the keel bracings is taken away. The last sand bike is emptied of sand, and the whole weight of the ship is now resting on the launch pads. The last of the barriers are taken away, and with great rejoicing, the East India man glides majestically down into the river. This is a very happy day for the shipbuilders and for the crew on board. For the first time, the East India Company flag is hoisted and blows proudly from the stern. The rigging and final work on the ship begin immediately after the launch and celebration. Here the nine-ton mast is raised with the help of a crane.
Now the question arises, will the mast fit? Is the angle through the deck correct? With the help of a type of shoehorn, the mast is carefully lowered in the ship through all of the decks to see if it fits. Down in the ship, the Minister of Trade places an historical coin in the foot of the mast. The maintenance of material that must resist water and the sun for many years must begin immediately. Wood tar, and again, wood tar is the answer. Strong lashings are laid around the bowsprit. They will prevent the bowsprit from lifting when the force stays strain, pull, and drag due to wind and rough seas. The ropes that are seen here are for taking up slack from the side and are called shrouds. The deck is incomplete. It is still missing the cabins, berths, and other furnishings and fittings. When complete, the ship will comply with all of the strict safety requirements that are obligatory for all large ships. It is not only on the outside that work is done. Work with furnishings, the mechanical systems, and pipes are at full speed. Now it is the spring of 2004. All three masts are in place. To protect the ship from the weather, it is covered with a tarp. But the work continues under the tarp. The first leg of the maiden voyage will follow the exact route of its ancestors from the 18th century. From her home harbor in Gothenburg, she will sail north of Great Britain to Cadiz in Spain. During the second leg, the ship will follow the winds surrounding the constant high pressures of the Atlantic Sea. This will take her close to the coast of Brazil, and therefore, we will make an extra stop in Recife, Brazil. After that, she will head across the Atlantic Sea towards South Africa and Cape Town. Here, the entire crew will be replaced. From South Africa, the ship will sail eastbound with the winds on the 38th parallel. This route will take her on the long journey to her next stop, Fremantle, in Australia. Thereafter, she heads for Jakarta in Indonesia. Here she will, just as her predecessors, stop for fresh supplies before the last leg of the journey. The final leg of the outbound journey is the short leg through the South Chinese Sea to Canton, China which is the historic destination of the ship.